That may be the greatest catch I've ever seen in my life. Okay, we're going to go through and talk about some running backs that are skyrocketing in my rest of season rankings. We updated those rankings earlier today over there on Patreon. And yeah, we're going to be talking about the running backs that rose the most. I mean, at least in perceived value. A couple of these players actually didn't really move up my rankings that much, but nonetheless, we're going to be talking about why people are getting so excited about these running backs. If you should be going through buying the hype, if maybe we should be fading in saying that they're going to come down to earth just a little bit. But of course, before we dive into the video, you know what we got to do? We got to give away some free fantasy flock network hats for everybody going down there, leaving a like and leaving a comment on the video. Our winners this video are going to come out from Chad and and DF. Thank you all so much for being a part of the flock and supporting the channel. And every time you go down there, drop a like, leave a comment. If you are subscribed to the channel, you get entered in to win a free Fantasy Flock Network hat. And also, you know, we have to go give a shout out to the sponsor of this video and every video that we do in Underdog Fantasy. On Underdog Fantasy, they're available pretty much every single state, not available in Nevada, Wyoming, Hawaii, and like Washington State. So if you live there, ignore this. But everywhere else, I mean, on Underdog Fantasy, you can go through and you can check out some player props. You can go get in a fantasy draft just for week 13 if that's something you want to do. I mean, you can go through and get in fantasy drafts for the rest of season. Then we are going to be doing a lot of stuff with them over there on the live streams when we're going to be getting into some 2022 fantasy drafts very soon from now, make sure you go make your first deposit with promo code flock and they'll match that deposit dollar for dollar up to $100. You can find the link in the live chat, find it in the description of the video. And let's go through, let's talk about these running backs and a running back that definitely got a bump up in our rest of season rankings was Leonard Fournette. Now with Leonard Fournette, we already had him ranked as a low in running back one in our rest of season rankings. But obviously coming out crushing this past week does his best Jonathan Taylor impression against Jonathan Taylor here. He comes out, I mean, only 17 carries, but 100 rushing yards, three rushing touchdowns, and yet again, just that dominant force in the receiving game. And in a PPR format, we know that is massive. I mean, right now, just as a receiving running back alone, Leonard Fournette has had 51 receptions so far this season, 354 receiving yards, and a receiving touchdown. Let's do some quick mental math. I'm assuming that's about say 90 points just off of what he's getting in the receiving game. So that's like you go over to Damian Harris, you go over to Nick Chubb, a running back that's not going to get any involvement at all in their own receiving game and go, hey, how about I add another 900 rushing yards to your statistics? I mean, that is the cheat code you're getting from Leonard Fournette right now. And going through and looking at our rest of season rankings, we had Leonard Fournette behind DeAndre Swift, Ezekiel Elliott, Alvin Kamara, and Dalvin Cook. And with the injury to Dalvin Cook, we'll talk about Alexander Madison later on in this video. I was going, okay, well, there's no way in hell that we can have Dalvin Cook over Leonard Fournette because even if you're looking at a points per game basis so far this season, I mean, Leonard Fournette has been more productive than Dalvin. So what am I arguing here? If we're going to have Dalvin Cook ahead of him, that can't be the case. We also moved him ahead of Alvin Kamara. Now, y'all know Alvin Kamara was a running back that we were talking about selling high about a month ago. And the main reason we are doing that is because how this offense was going to transform without Jameis Winston under center. And we really didn't want to be making the bet on Alvin Kamara in the long term. Well, still, I don't really want to be making that bet. I don't want to assume that Alvin Kamara is still a top three running back with this offense just looking atrocious in New Orleans. And I think at some point, they're going to have to get Taysom Hill in here if Taysom Hill can manage to get healthy. So, I mean, here with Alvin Kamara, we are going to be dropping him behind Leonard Fournette as well because same thing. I mean, Alvin Kamara is right there about the same mark as Leonard Fournette on a points per game basis. They're within two points from each other. The situation has gotten worse for Alvin Kamara as the season goes on where you add in marking room to a scenario and at the same time, you just make this one of the worst offenses in the entire NFL. So if you're looking at Leonard Fournette, a running back that this past week, and we have seen this week in and week out, this is why Leonard Fournette has been at the very top of our rankings. It's he is seeing almost every single snap, almost every single touch, and one of the most productive offenses in the NFL. I mean, here in Tampa this past week, yet again, 54 out of 67 snaps. He runs 31 routes. He runs 31 routes out of the backfield compared to Ronald Jones running four and Giovanni Bernard running zero. I mean, here with Leonard Fournette, clearly he's that bell cow running back, one of the best offenses in football. So I am moving him up over there on Patreon to my rest of season. I mean, running back six. Now, th there's a running back that we're about to talk about that moved up ahead of him at running back five, but maybe I'm just a little irrational there. I think really, 
Leonard Fournette has to be a mid-running back one going forward. I don't think we're overreacting here because you've seen the consistent production, whether that's in the receiving game, whether that's in the red zone with Leonard Fournette every single week this season. Like a big thing is let's go through and let's remove the first three weeks because looking at it and saying every week this season, that's honestly a lie. Remember the first three weeks, you did have Giovanni Bernard getting some snaps. You had Ronald Jones getting involved as well. But if we remove the first three weeks this season where he only had nine carries, 11 carries, and four carries, that's when you really see the new role for Leonard Fournette take over. And that's where you see that he is getting up and he is averaging 20.9 fantasy points per game. If he was able to average 20.9 fantasy points per game throughout this entire season so far, he would be the running back four only behind Derrick Henry, Jonathan Taylor, and Austin Eckler on a points per game basis. So I think you have to drastically move up Leonard Fournette. And our next running back, someone that, I mean, we had as a buy low candidate about a month ago when he was injured. Then he came back, had some impressive games. We said, okay, let's take our profits. Let's sell them high. Let's move to a longer term running back, Elijah Mitchell. Now with Elijah Mitchell, I mean, one of the reasons that I was coming out saying, you know what? Not a massive fan of Mitchell. I mean, it is that they had never shown that they wanted to just use one running back in this backfield. They had shown that they were going to get a multitude of players involved. And at the same time, with Elijah Mitchell, I mean, they really hadn't demonstrated any ability to use him as a receiving running back out of the backfield, where, I mean, previous to this past week, he had a total of nine targets this season. Now, yes, he missed some time, but still nine targets is nothing. And I mean, this week proved a lot of things. I mean, A, you did have Debo Samuel still kind of getting carries out of the backfield. You still had Debo Samuel being used as a pseudo running back for this 49ers team. But still, I mean, if you're going to be looking at what we ended up getting from the snaps played between Elijah Mitchell and Jeff Wilson, Elijah Mitchell damn near played 50 snaps in this backfield. Jeff Wilson played 10. Elijah Mitchell, 27 carries. Jeff Wilson, two. Elijah Mitchell, six targets out of the backfield. Jeff Wilson, one. They clearly changed the way that they are going through and implementing these running backs. It looks like Elijah Mitchell is now the three-down player in one of the most run-heavy offenses in the entire NFL. Now, it's hard to get him up in the top 12 of running backs. I'm going to be completely honest in that. This Debo Samuel injury doesn't look like it's going to be significant. So still, Debo's going to be stealing some of these red zone touches as a running back pretty much. I mean, Debo Samuel at this point has five rushing touchdowns so far this season. I mean, I tweeted this out on Sunday. Let me go through and find the tweet really quick so I can actually tell you the exact numbers. But yeah, I tweeted out rushing touchdowns in 2021. Debo Samuel, five. Dalvin Cook, four. Alvin Kamara, three. And Aaron Jones, three. Like Debo Samuel is going to still be stealing some of this volume from Elijah Mitchell, but knowing that Mitchell can now be used as the every down running back here. And at the same time, he can be used as a receiving running back out of the backfield. We're going to have him as that low end running back one high end running back two. I have him directly behind Saquon Barkley, Nick Chubb and Cordell Patterson in our rest of season rankings. I have him directly ahead of James Robinson, Aaron Jones and Daryl Henderson. I would love to know your opinion on that. I know nine out of 10 people watching this video right now are going to be screaming, Mason, you idiot. He has to go ahead of Saquon Barkley, move him ahead of Saquon Barkley. Move. I don't know if I can do that. I, I don't know. Just because we've seen Saquon Barkley before get up to 90% of his backfield snaps and be able to go get seven targets a game. And if you can find that type of usage in an offense, if he can just stay fully healthy, I still think Barkley is a higher ceiling than what we may see from Elijah Mitchell, despite his offense being significantly worse. I'd love to know your opinion, though. And now let's go over to our next running back, our running back five in our rest of season rankings. One of my most drafted players this season, Joe Mixon. And y'all know, I don't need to talk about Joe Mixon that much because y'all are tired. And I, I trust me, I get it. Y'all are tired of hearing me scream about Joe Mixon as we have done pretty much every single day. Remember, we went through, we looked at the injury history coming into the season and we said, hey, these injuries don't line up. It's not the same injury you're seeing over and over again. Joe Mixon is not as injury prone as y'all want to make him out to be. We looked at it going, oh my gosh, well, they have no Giovanni Bernard there. I mean, with no Giovanni Bernard, uh, Joe Mixon's going to be used more as a receiving running back out of the backfield as well. And my God, they added in Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase provides them a speed element that they've never had in this offense. So that's going to allow them to stretch the field, a lighter boxes for Joe Mixon. Joe Burrow will be a much better quarterback in year two. The offensive line will be improved. I mean, this was going to be a smash spot for Joe Mixon. It's coming together. It's coming together beautifully. I mean, going into the fantasy football playoffs, I could not be more excited about what we are going to have from Joe Mixon here. Now, over the past two weeks, Joe Mixon 
has over 60 touches. He has over 60 touches in this offense, 62 total touches, damn near 60 rushing attempts on his own. So far this season, he's already gone over 200 rush attempts. Now, it's hard to look at this season just as a vacuum because, to be completely honest, it's even a little more impressive for Joe Mixon than we want to give him credit for. Because if y'all go back, and if you remember, week four against the Jacksonville Jaguars, he got injured in the fourth quarter. He had the low ankle sprain, and a lot of people thought he was going to miss a significant amount of time. Well, he missed the end of that game. And in week five, I mean, he split the backfield 50-50 with Samaj P. Ryan, but that was because he shouldn't have even played in week five against the Packers. I mean, I'm very surprised to see that he was able to even come back. He didn't play his usual role. And if we were to go through and remove those two weeks that you have had from Joe Mixon, I mean, the already impressive 20 fantasy points per game mark that he has, I mean, gets even better. Let's go through and let's change that number that he has had at 215 total points. Let's remove those two weeks. And that's going to be going down to, if I can do the math really quick, that's going to be going down to 191. And that's also going to be through a total of, I believe, nine games played. That'll go up to 21.2 fantasy points per game. Yeah, that would put him only behind Derrick Henry, Jonathan Taylor, and Austin Eckler as the running back. Like, he is a top five running back. There's no need to be worried. This is a significantly better offense than it was previous. Like, nothing could change about your analysis with Joe Mixon here. It's been the same throughout the entire season. So now we can, once we see it on the field, I mean, definitely get even more excited. And I'm moving him ahead of, he's ahead of Leonard Fournette. He's ahead of Alvin Kamara. He's ahead of Dalvin Cook. He's ahead of an injured DeAndre Swift and an injured Ezekiel Elliott. I, I don't know if you can make an argument to have any running backs outside of Jonathan Taylor, Austin Eckler, Najee Harris, and Christian McCaffrey ahead of Joe Mixon. And I know a lot of people watching this video right now would probably even want Mixon ahead of Najee Harris and Christian McCaffrey. I don't know if I can go there. I don't know if I can go there, but I can put Joe Mixon as a top five running back. And our next running back will be someone that, I mean, we got a lot of people excited about in the live stream last night coming out saying the breakouts here, another running back that y'all know I've loved. I'm saying pump your brakes. He has not moved up much in my rest of season rankings. And that's Javante Williams. Now, Javante Williams, I get it. He had a great week this past week. He was the running back six with over 20 fantasy points against the Los Angeles Chargers. He came out, I mean, 54 rushing yards, 57 receiving yards, and a total of 20.1 fantasy points. I mean, Javante Williams, it, it sucks to say this, but nothing's changed in this scenario. We've been saying it all season now that Javante Williams is the much better running back in Denver. Javante Williams will be a dominant force when he's able to expand his role and take over some of what Melvin Gordon is getting here. Now, Javante Williams continue to show that he is a very, very good running back. And Javante Williams is beginning to see that role. But the issue is, I mean, a lot of it's coming off of Melvin Gordon hip injury. I, I mean, with Melvin Gordon here, the injury, it doesn't really sound like it's going to be, I mean, keeping Melvin Gordon off the field. It just kind of limited him in this game. So it looks like, yeah, Javante Williams, 36 snaps compared to Melvin Gordon's 26. Javante Williams, I mean, he even had less carries than Melvin Gordon. He had more targets out of the backfield. You can't be looking at the snaps and saying that Javante is now taking over the starting running back. Trust, I want it to happen. I want Javante to be the guy here. I just think it's maybe a little bit premature. I think this is mainly due to the fact that, I mean, you did have that injury suffered by Melvin Gordon, which kind of limited him throughout this game. Also, this was a game that wasn't necessarily that close. I mean, you did have the Denver Broncos getting to a large lead at the very beginning, so it was easy for them to go through and relax on Melvin Gordon's usage. Now, if you're looking so far this season, I mean, Javante Williams, 568 rushing yards off of 117 carries. He looks great. He will be great when he can take 50% of this workload from Melvin Gordon. But right now, it's just a split backfield right down the middle. So don't get too excited just yet because I don't think we can say that the full-on Javante Williams breakout is here. And now our next update that we are going to be giving out will be over to Alexander Madison in the Minnesota Vikings. Now, of course, this is just coming off the back of the Dalvin Cook injury. That's essentially all that this is. But I mean, with Dalvin Cook, he was carted off the field. Now, it doesn't look like he's missing the rest of the season or anything. Now, it looks like, I mean, I'm sorry, about three hours ago before we recorded this video, a report came out that he has a torn labrum in his right shoulder and may have a similar injury to the left shoulder, pending on the results of an MRI on Monday. Okay, so it looks like you may have Dalvin Cook out a significant amount of time here. 
Ooh, okay, so this changes things for Alexander Madison. Okay, so with Madison, y'all know this was another running back you had to love coming into the season, knowing that if Dalvin Cook missed time, even though haters wanted to tell us otherwise coming into the season, if Dalvin Cook missed time, you were looking at Alexander Madison and you're going, okay, damn, we got a top five running back here. Because not only would he take over that Dalvin Cook role, but there's no secondary running back in Minnesota all of a sudden be siphoning off touches from that featured down RB. So it's almost as if, if Alexander Madison goes over and he is the primary running back in Minnesota, you have to have him at least in the same range as where you had Dalvin Cook in your rankings because maybe he's a little less efficient because he's not as good as Dalvin Cook. A rocket scientist doesn't need to tell you that. But I mean, if he's going to have a larger workload, which is safe to say based on what we have seen earlier this season, going and looking at him playing the Seattle Seahawks in week three. I mean, the fantasy points, they were nice. It wasn't anything through the roof. I mean, he had 23 fantasy points, but I mean, what was very telling about this is the way he got there. 26 rush attempts, 112 rushing yards, eight targets out of the backfield, six receptions, 59 receiving yards. And then in week five against the Lions, of course, it's a beautiful matchup against the Lions. Nonetheless, a very similar situation, 25 carries, seven targets out of the backfield with Alexander Madison. I mean, what is also fantastic is over the next few games, he gets the Lions, he gets the Pittsburgh Steelers, and I know with Pittsburgh here, yes, they have a good defense overall. Their run defense hasn't been that great. I mean, you can maybe attribute that to the fact that, I mean, Ben Roethlisberger is clearly nothing special. I mean, this team's trailing the majority of games, so their opponents are able to go through and run all over, which will be the case with Alexander Madison and the Minnesota Vikings here. So if Dalvin Cook misses time, of course, we'll be giving updates in all our live streams throughout the week on Dalvin Cook, but assuming he misses time, it looks like Alexander Madison may be jumping up and maybe a top five running back over the next few weeks. Now, our last running back we're going to be talking about here, not much to say. Nothing has changed so far. Let's go over and let's look at Cordell Patterson coming out and absolutely dominating his first week back in. I mean, yet again, to see this with Cordell Patterson, it's just a consistent force so far this season, averaging about 18 and a half fantasy points per game. But that's not really fair to do to him because remember in week 10 against the Dallas Cowboys, he left early with an injury. And if we go through and if we remove that week 10 performance where he scored 4.9 fantasy points, let's do some basic math real quick. That's going to take his total of 160, I mean 186.1 down to 181.2. And that will be through nine games played. So Cordell Patterson in theory would have averaged 20.1 fantasy points per game. And he's doing it in a very weird way. I will admit that Cordell Patterson, believe it or not, like how many people would believe this stat right now? He has not had 100 carries this season. He has not had 100 carries this season. He has just been incredibly efficient. I mean, he has been dynamic with the ball. He has 41 receptions, 500 receiving yards. He's clearly the number one weapon above Kyle Pitts even in this offense for the Atlanta Falcons. I don't really know what to say. I mean, he has some tough matchups coming up against the Buccaneers, against the San Francisco 49ers. But what's a little bit different about Cordell Patterson, and this is something that we talked about at length, is this is a running back that is not really dependent on that matchup. Because a lot of running backs, I mean, someone like Damian Harris is the perfect example. With Damian Harris, even Nick Chubb, you're relying on the touchdown upside that they have. You're relying on the fact that that offense needs to be able to effectively run block, to be able to effectively just create holes for that running back, to see the big play, to get to the red zone, to get into the end zone. And that's what's going to drive the majority of their fantasy value. Well, Cordell Patterson doesn't really need that. Because you're going through, you're looking at some pretty tough matchups against the Washington football team. I mean, who the hell cares that he only has 34 rushing yards? He's dropping 35 fantasy points when he can come away with five receptions, 82 receiving yards, and three receiving touchdowns. Now, of course, that's not sustainable. Of course, you're not going to be scoring a receiving touchdown on 60% of your receptions. But even going back, looking at the Giants, I mean, seven targets, six receptions, 82 receiving yards. I mean, the Jets, bad example, obviously, a really good defense. I mean, going through and looking at the New Orleans Saints, I mean, the Saints... A perfect example of what you may be seeing against the Buccaneers, what you may be seeing against the Panthers, what you may be seeing against the 49ers coming up where he does have really tough matchups. I mean, against the Saints in week nine, doesn't matter that he only has 10 rushing yards. 10 rush, boo, who? He's a running back, a running back that in that contest is coming away with six targets, six receptions, 126 receiving yards. Against the Buccaneers in week two, 
Oh my gosh, no, he only has 11 rushing yards. No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the matchup. When he can come out, he can have seven targets, five receptions, 58 receiving yards, and the receiving touchdown. So Cordell Patterson, we have moved him up in our rest of season rankings. I have him as our running back 13. I have him directly behind Saquon Barkley and Nick Chubb, directly ahead of Elijah Mitchell, James Robinson. And I honestly think I could hear an argument to maybe move him ahead of both Nick Chubb and Saquon Barkley in a full PPR format because he's literally like, we've said this a million times, you take a low-end running back two and you take a low-end wide receiver three, you combine them together in one player and you get yourself Cordell Patterson. And I think that's all I got for you. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please go down there, drop that like, leave a comment to get entered in to win a free Fantasy Flock Network hat. And also make sure you go sign up for Underdog Fantasy. Check out the player props that they have. Go get in a fantasy draft just for week 13. When you use promo code FLOCK, they'll match your first deposit dollar for dollar up to $100. Nothing supports this channel more. Please take advantage of that deal. And like I said, please support this channel. And yeah, that's all I got for you. Thank you so much. I hope you have a great day and I hope I see you out in the live stream tonight.